Uh, five-year results. Dear President, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude for the opportunity to make a presentation for oncologists, and I hope um, it will be the case in the future. So our topic is brachytherapy, and with it brings together a group of uh, people with the same way of thinking. I mean, radiologists, radiotherapists, oncologists, medical physicians, physicists, to say nothing about anesthesiologists. Uh, the authors uh, as my colleague has already mentioned uh, my way in brachytherapy of prostate has started uh, um, uh, and as for brachytherapy uh, so here we imply age the air uh, iridium uh, use uh, low power dose. This is what we used at prosthetic cancer. I'll briefly talk about recommendations of uh, European urologists, site Astro, AU, AO, AORTC. In 2016, the group for uh, favorable, for good prognosis has the reference. All the recent years, uh, the sum uh, according to Gleason scores, was just six. Now, less than 30% of biopsies taken from prostate are allowed to carry out brachytherapy. It's been discussed for a long time, and now it has grown into these recommendations of this year. Very briefly, brachytherapy in mono mode in a group of favorable uh, prognosis. You see that the data of our foreign colleagues show uh, quite impressive results for such type of treatment and uh, they set brachytherapy in one line with surgical treatment uh, and there are a lot of arguments uh, and debates between oncologists and radiotherapists and the group of intermediate prognosis and modern uh, regimen we see quite good results versus uh, some uh, presentations on surgical treatment uh, having advantages. Uh, these results have certain advantages. Uh, our group has experience in brachytherapy in uh, low dose mode using ultrasound navigation and computer tomograph. All in all, the, since 2009, there have been 340 implantations, 173 were um, uh, computer tomography guided, and 140 one implementation under uh, uh, ultrasound guidance. Now we are using uh, the last option because it's more economically feasible and uh, it's less time consuming. Uh, this is a historic fact. The year of 1991, Professor Kutrivelis, a Greek American, uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, the patent uh, he is receiving for his technology. And since that time, we uh, have been using this technology in our center in Obnix. So we received permission uh, for implementing this technology in Russia. And now I'd like to uh, give you information with regards to 67 patients who were treated by the method of brachytherapy with uh, low power dose and uh, computer, uh, guided by computer tomograph. The follow-up period was 60 months, five years. Uh, we see that the level of PCA uh, from low indicators from four to five. Uh, Gleason uh, scale is uh, uh, shown here, and we didn't take uh, patients with Gleason more than seven. Uh, here it's 6.7. Uh, the volume of process State from 19 to 91.4 uh, square uh, cube, uh, square centimeters. Uh, brachytherapy uh, CT guided um, may allow to take every volume of prostate of patients with 130 cubic centimeters. But further on, after following up such patients, we arrived at the conclusion that it was not feasible. And those recommendations that were given, which is 50, maximum 60 cubic centimeters, and uroflometry was 15.8 milliliters per second. Uh, initially, urination was uh, had quite good quality in these patients. As you see, the patients are represented by three risk groups. 
that I will allow ourselves to take six patients from high risk group, and uh, we are not doing that. Now, uh, patients uh, with high PSA, uh, glycine, and tumor in both lobes of pancreas, or sorry, prostate, uh, and we didn't take capsules of the prostate. What are the results? So five years survival, relapse-free survival, uh, according to the level of, of PSA in the group of favorable prognosis was 100 percent. We haven't had any cases of PSA growth in this group. In the group, uh, which was quite unusual, with the group with unfavorable prognosis where we didn't expect uh, that direct progression, so still these patients are living without PSA growth, uh, but uh, we administered a adjuvant hormonal therapy within 24 months, and the group of intermediate prognosis here. In this group, we have two relapses. One of them is local, that was treated uh, with the second introduction of sources into semen vesicles and the base of uh, uh, prostate and the second recurrency. This is uh, dissemination on lymphatic nodes and bones, which was identified at four years after in a patient according to PET uh, CT with coline, and we have to say that uh, the tracer was not accumulated in the prostate. Uh, nevertheless, it was uh, a mis uh, mistakenly selected uh, patient for uh, this group if to make a retrospective analysis out of complications. Um, this is the stricture of a retro membranous uh, area. Those were patients who further were treated uh, surgically. Um, there was optical uh, incision of a retro uh, that uh, delay of urination was observed within the first two months, uh, uh, semi uh, decay of iodine and uh, radiation rectite was in uh, one patient. According to our talk, it was second degree. According to uh, uh, CT, uh, the sources migrated. Uh, in the direction of the rectum, and uh, those were implantation errors, which can often take place uh, at uh, ultrasound impl guided implantation. So, here you see the data of our joint study with uh, Kazan colleagues. Uh, this is an oncological dispensary. We performed our work involving 126 patients with intermediate risk. At that time, they did have recommendation that we have now in 2016. Uh, so uh, we had that work with these patients, and uh, some of them, that is 104 patients, went through brachytherapy. And the uh, total dose was 145 gray and adjuvant therapy and, uh, within six months. And the second group was small. It received brachytherapy, 110 gray boosts. This is 122 and 44 gray uh, were given in distant radiation therapy to, uh, uh, to prostate. And here you see the patients and the results of the group that received brachytherapy in more regimen plus hormone therapy. Five years survival is 97%. Brachytherapy and uh, uh, 95 and 5%. And so relapse free survival in both groups was 97%. You see that mean level of PSA in this group was 0 0.29 nanogram for milliliter according to operative treatment criteria. We know that it shouldn't be high 0 0.2 nanogram milliliter after removal of uh, prostate. In this case, prostate was not removed. Nevertheless, PSA was practically on the minimal level. Here, in these both groups, we've seen complications as radiographic arthritis, uh, stricter uh, urethral stricture, and uh, uh, radiation rectite. What sort of problems exist at present? Those who are dealing with uh, low power brachytherapy, there is the one main problem that is sources. They are expensive. What are the opportunities? Opportunity to transfer to high power brachytherapy, and it's logical. It can be performed in such centers and. Uh, 
uh, X-ray radiology and other centers. But nevertheless, we have to follow another path. And in our wonderful uh, city of Obnings, uh, we decided to follow this way, get, uh, starting to work with uh, physicists. And last year, we received a permit to conduct clinical trials, which was started in October last year. Here you see the stages. Here you see the microsources. That's the ready-to-use trend with the iodine-125 source. Our group comprised 33 patients, and all our three branches, the Urology Institute, the Herzen Institute, and Siva Institute. 36 patients we had in total with low risk, they got the Iodine 125 therapy in our Obninsk Institute and patients with intermediate risk. Uh, for them, we applied the uh, our own protocol, that's the lymphadenectomy plus brachytherapy with iodine 125. The observation period for this patient is to date relatively small. It amounts to six to ten months. That's the post-implant control. One of the complications, some complications include the acute the urination delay, dysuria of the second stage, and the gastrointestinal toxicity was not observed in our in our study at all. That is, today we have a product which is about to be registered. Hopefully, it will um, get license and certificate that will lower the price of brachiotherapy in Russia. In conclusion, I just want to wrap up my presentation as one of uh, oncogurologists. Don't consider me a betrayer. You can see here the question, knife or needle, what uh, will win? This data shows that five-year survival rate with the radical prostatoactonomy and brachiotherapy is almost the same. The point is the selection of patients. And here we should have very clear selection criteria and uh, effective teamwork. So selection is paramount. Thank you for your attention. I thank you. What was the reason for you to add distant radiation to patients after brachiotomy? These were the patients of intermediate risk. That is why they uh, were categorized into getting combined brachiotherapy. Now, when the prognosis is favorable, we split those patients into two groups. So for favored patients, they can get mono mode for brachiotherapy. I'm telling that because uh, f 44, th yeah, the dose is 44. Re yeah, 22 is useless. So, uh, so you had 22 patients with 44 grades. Okay, I got it.